Hello, everybody. Uh, before beginning with this, I will speak in Spanish for a couple of seconds. Hola, ¿cómo están? Muy bienvenidos a todos. Es un verdadero gusto estar aquí en, el, en esta nueva edición del Play Doc. Tengo el, la suerte, por un lado, eh, de conocer a Sara, la directora del, del festival, como Ángel. Ellos vienen haciendo el festival hace mucho tiempo, me refiero a Play Doc. Y hace un tiempo para acá eh, tuve también la, la suerte de que me convocaron justamente a hacer estas mesas. Este es el tercer año y veremos cómo nos va en esta ocasión. Eh, tenemos invitados que eh, a mi juicio son muy importantes. I will introduce you in Spanish a little bit and then in English. Los voy a introducir un poquito en español y después vamos a pasar al inglés. Pero bueno, Jonathan Perel, Giovanni, Johnny uh, y Sean Menchi son cineastas que provienen del... Ha, han trabajado más que nada en lo que llamamos documental o en el cine de no ficción. Y me parecía que era importante para pensar algunos elementos... Eh, que están relacionados con eh, las poéticas del cine contemporáneo y las formas que, de retórica que devienen de las poéticas. Pero esto va a ser en inglés, por razones obvias. Eh, nuestros invitados, excepto Jonathan, que tampoco... Ni Jonathan ni yo tenemos nombres muy españoles, que digamos, eh, pero eh, somos ambos de habla hispana. Pero vamos a pasar al inglés... Tenemos la suerte de que todos podemos hacerlo en ese idioma. Eh, algún día quizás va a cambiar y podremos hacerlo todos en chino. ¿Quién sabe? Pero así son las cosas. Dicho esto, voy a empezar, voy a cambiar al inglés. Y le agradezco también a Carlos, que es nuestro operador, que está detrás de todos estos eh, pantallitas, que es la persona que se encarga de que esto salga al aire. So, I go to English. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I was just making an introduction in Spanish. I won't repeat what I was saying, but just the, the most important thing is to introduce properly our, uh, our guest. Uh, <coughs> my name is Roger Cosa, I'm a film critic. I, I have been invited by the festival to organize these uh, round tables, which are not round tables, in fact, they are. Uh, round uh, screens, I don't know how to say it. It's not even round, it's triangle screens, meetings. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. But however, uh, let me introduce all of them. On one hand, I will go up to Jonathan Perel. Jonathan Perel is an Argentinian filmmaker. He has been working uh, in the last couple of years, mainly was as a main subject the question of memory, political memory, but not only political memory. Uh, for Argentinians, it's quite an important issue, of course. He has been doing a couple... At this moment, he has more than uh, almost 10 films, maybe nine, eight. Uh, the last one is Camouflaje. It was... Uh, it was he, its release was in Berlin in 2022. Uh, another film that maybe you might watch and want to watch is Toponimia, uh, res, uh, Responsabilidad Empresarial, uh, corporate, corporate Responsibility, that was the title of the film in, in English, and there are some others. Uh, the, very welcome, my dear Jonathan, and thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Roger. <laughs> very nice meeting you here again. <laughs> Okay, now we go to Sean Menchi. Uh, I had the privilege to be in another Spanish film festival uh, last year, almost one year ago, and I was a member of the jury at that moment. And uh, uh, at that moment, also in Punto de Vista, uh, self-portrait fairy tale in 47 km, uh, or kilometers, I guess is the translation, uh, was one of the films in the competition and, uh, and the, it was one of the films which got the prize the second prize it was in fact it's not the second prize it was a prize for the director and a prize for a film which one day it should be the same <laughs> but anyway uh, we decided to give it to her since then i had been the, very curious about what she has been doing uh, mainly she's a choreographer and she's a dancer 
But she began exploring through cinema with a couple of films. All of them are called self-portrait. We have self-portrait uh, themes, self-portrait dancing at 47 kilometers and so on. For almost 10, almost, uh, 10 years, she has been doing these films. And there is absolutely unique, and, um, and I would like to talk to her because there are many things to explore in the topic that today we are together this night. On the case of Giovanni, uh, Giovanni Gioni uh, has made a film that I, I saw it firstly in... No, in fact, I didn't see it in that moment. It was in, 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 in Biennale, in the festival that we... that I, is one of the festivals that I work. But from the planet of the humor, of the humans, was in that festival, and then I had the privilege to program him in another festival. He has also done almost between uh, seven to eight films. Uh, one of the most uh, known is In Purgatorio, uh, and, uh, and he is very playful in the world that he understands his cinema. There is a kind of ludic, playful uh, uh, um, essays in the way that he, he works. And Planet of the Hum from the Planet of the Human is one of the most, for me at least, more, most uh, uh, not only playful but very lucid and very uh, on the point in the in the film that I've been watching in the, in the last two three years in the in the documentary realm, whatever it is. So <clears throat> this are the presentation. And let me now read the, how this table is being presented. Uh, it has been written like this. Poetics and rhetoric of documentary cinema. In the middle of the last century, the, the appearance of the smaller cameras and the less expensive possibilities of recording directed sound led to a change in the way of filming reality. Something similar happened at the, return, at the turn of the century and with the gradual replacement of analog cinema with that of digital. After 23 years of the new century, the digitalization of cinema in all its order institute a new dimension for documentary cinema. The epistemological status of the image has changed, the modes of production are different, which is predicated on unprecedented possibilities in the poetics of the real and in the rhetorical ways with which an experience of the real is transmitted today. What has changed then? There are new possibilities of registering and recording as well as assembling and editing. In addition, the concept of a story may permeate any field of reality. What is the nature of, net, of documentary cinema nowadays? So this is how it has been presented. Maybe it's too long, maybe it has not been understood completely, but let's, let's, the raw, let's begin. So um, again, I will play with the, with the the aesthetics that we have. Uh, Jonathan, uh, the other day we were talking, uh, when I talked to you in order to invite you to this round table, and there was something that we were just uh, exchanging ideas, and there was something that I really, really like, and I think we, we could go back to that point. I remember when I saw El Predio, uh, one of your films, and then the, the second one, uh, the 17 monuments, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> I remember to told you. I, I told you that you need uh, your films would be absolutely different if those films were being done in 35 millimeters uh, shooting or in 16 millimeter shooting. There was something in the digital that, for certain kind of observer, observational. Uh, way of understanding the poetics of uh, observational cinema was not proper at that moment. And then the, the, the cameras began being more reliable. There was a, an evolution in the way that 
uh, digital camera nowadays works. And nowadays, I, I realized that what you do, uh, your field, it works. For instance, since uh, responsabilidad empresarial or corporate responsibility, it's quite clear the difference in the quality of your films. And then, again, with camouflage. So, uh, when we were talking about that, I also told you that it was very interesting to see that behind that, if, you, if one sees your whole work, it's like also not only to see what you have been working, but it's just the evolution of the material, the material image, digital image as a history, as a kind of documentary of the medium. So can you talk a little bit about that? What has changed for you? Uh, and uh, how, how do you think it has um, shaped the field that you have been doing lately? Mm -hmm. Well, where to start? Um, I don't think a lot has changed in the way that I always do my films alone with no money. I don't ask for money to any kind of institutions, not to festivals, not to the National Institute of Cinema. So all my films are very modest in terms of what I can afford. And I do the camera and I do the sound myself. So I've been doing this since the first film, the one you mentioned, El Predio. Uh, and I will keep doing this because I, I feel comfortable with this uh, system of uh, being alone in the shooting. Um, it's something that came especially because I started making my films in, in places that were former concentration camps. And it was not easy to get into these places. Sometimes I had a permission, sometimes I didn't have a permission to do it. But either way, the idea of a former concentration camp full of ghosts inspired me this idea of going there alone, spending a lot of time, and I couldn't carry a, a crew. Even if I had the money, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with, with a crew with me. So I always do my films with a little urgency in terms of that they are trying to discuss what is going on at the moment in terms of construction of memory, politics around these uh, sites. So if my first film, El Predio, they opened the most famous concentration camp of Argentina, they kick the militaries out. And I go directly in with the camera to make a film right away after the militaries left with a lot of urgency, with the technology available at the moment. And, and I agree with you that that film had very little movement in the screen and you're, I was shooting standard definition. There, there was not even HD cameras at the moment and I couldn't afford to do it in 16 or 35. And it was difficult for the film because in the shot, there's only a leaf of a tree moving, but you can barely see it. Uh, so that, that was a problem. I don't come from, from a background of a film university you know sometimes when you, when you study the cinema in university you have a kind of attachment to the to the to the medium to the, the the film and the material and the cameras my background has much to do with with the academic uh, history background and so i i did the way i could but i also remember in a way that the the eye and the perception of the audience also changes during time so before that film, I made a short film with the same camera that was blown up into 35 millimeter for the local Buenos Aires Film Festival. And it was amazing. And when I see it today, it's awful, <laughs> the resolution and the quality. But then my second film, 17 Monuments, that you mentioned, was the first one in HD. And it was shot with just these cheap HD cameras that we could afford at the moment. And when I saw it in, in the cinema for the first time, I was amazed by the quality of the image. And if we see it now, it's not uh, either, it's, it's also not quality enough to show shots that will last for four minutes. There's nothing going on in the shot most of the times. It's a very long shot and there was not a lot uh, moving. Um, and then the perception of the, the audience also starts adapting to these new technologies and, and being able to, to see more and, and to watch more. Um, but 
I will, I mean, what I don't want to do is to spend a lot of time of my life looking for money, waiting for money to make a film. Um, I will keep doing my films uh, with a lot of uh, urgency and I will try to shoot as many films as possible, not because quantity has uh, <laughs> anything in special, but because I, I like what I do and I want to be there making films and shooting. And, and I would not let uh, money stop me. Um, and I mean, in, in the, these last uh, films that are much better in terms of uh, technology and they look amazing and the last two were premiered at the, well, the many festivals but when you go there and show them at the Berlinale you expect them to be at the same level of the rest of the films that you're watching but still I made the camera myself I own that camera I made the sound I made the color I did everything again like I used to do 15 years ago so Technology became cheaper and I was able to afford it, but nothing changed in terms of, um, of that. But, of course, you can make decisions that the shots can be longer because uh, the texture of the image can accompany that. And, and uh, in Toponomy, for example, that it's a film that it's in the middle of my work, I was so aware that the the texture of the image was not good for this observational film and you are guilty because of this because you told me so I was aware so somehow the shots were shorter and they were only 15 second shots when I used to make one minute shots and also I was looking for more movement in the shots because I needed movement to be in there um, for me my films are about time and I want the audience to experience time when they see my films and to, to feel time passing. But you need the movement to, to feel the time because if nothing is moving in the image, uh, you, you don't feel time. Um, and yeah, and now it happens to me when I see other films that are um, very static and observational and they are still shooting uh, these very long shots and. Uh, standard definition or, or, or SD, I, I cannot see them anymore. I walk, wake, wake up and leave the cinema and, and it happens to me to very prestigious filmmakers. Uh, but um, this is, I think, because the, our eye and, and our uh, perception evolves and, and, and changes uh, through, the, through the images. Also, when, when I travel to festivals, I, I, I always try to watch as many films as possible. But I'm very interested in this that you are mentioning about the, 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 the let's say the texture, not the quality, the texture of the image. I, I will go to see films just to get an idea of what is cinema looking every year, you know? So when I come back to, to my place, okay, now I know what is cinema looking in 2022. 2023, I was not able to travel yet, so I don't know what is cinema looking in 2023. Next year, I will be anxious to really know, okay, I need to know what is cinema looking. Um, does it make sense? <laughs> it makes sense, of course. And uh, let me go to Shan Shan Benshi, our uh, our only woman guest, but she's the best. So, um, for me, when I saw uh, your film in. Uh, Self portrait fairy tale uh, in the 47 kilometers. I was absolutely amazed about the what you do with your with the kids, particularly in the sense that it seems to be that camera are available around. We are talking about a small small village in China, in a in a region that we assume they are not cinemas, they are not people learning cinema, but you handle them, the camera, like if they were pencils, and they begin doing films together with you, and these are part of the film as such. So I was absolutely amazed about the, the evolution of a filmmaker, you, but also the evolution for 
the, of the of cinema for people who are not filmmakers. Could you talk tell, talk about a little bit how all this has been how it happened in your film? Then you had the idea to deliver the camera. How was that? And then I have another pro, uh, question to you. But let's begin with this. Um, yes, I just want to uh, add some words or to what the Jonathan told. Yes, I, I feel like uh, we are very similar. <laughs> we, are, we are filming very similar way. I film by myself. I do everything by myself. And so for me, um, my camera is like uh, my friends, the, the best friends with me when I uh, where, when I start to filming. Uh, as the Roger mentioned before, my background it was dan dancer dancing. I dance since I was nine years old. So a few more cinema is far away from my life. Um, I think when I think about film or cinema. Is something else. It's something else. Some people's stories. It's not never happened with me before. When I know there's something like documentary film, uh, this kind of film. So this is very um, long story. What I want to uh, link to what the Roger talk or ask me. So I want to back to the the background of the. What you said in the uh, last uh, middle of century, but in China is uh, actually later. When the I think it is uh, when the DV camera or small camera uh, into the normal people's family or normal people's um, can own can buy it. It's almost in uh, in the end of nineties. So before this, there's no. A film or photo camera in the normal people's life or family. We don't have the personal video before. We don't have personal uh, film like before in the ordinary families. So in the, in the end of 90s in the China, we don't have the, we only have one channel to see the film or cinema or news or all the image uh, Move, moving image is the TV system, CCTV, the central television. But in the time, there's some um, some people who work in the television system. They are come out. They, they borrow the big camera, the the professional camera, and they got they they borrow it to filming something else like uh, normal people's life, um, daily life in the in the modern. Uh, Chinese people's life, something like that, or some people uh, who are come from together from different small city, like a um, freelance artist. They are they are in the uh, how they are live in the Beijing in this time. But for the um, what you said, the revolution actually is I for me myself is I think is in beginning of. Uh, 2000, 2000s, um, there's females, how to say it, female, female, female filmmaker, they have, they can have this small camera with them. So they can come join this system of the filmmaking. Um, so this is the big movement or big change in our background. In this uh, background, that's why I can, um, I can make a film because I don't have the um, professional background about, I don't, I, I never learn how, what is cinema, what is the lines, what's, what's about the editing, something. I always um, think this is a different world or different art language. But when, when the, I think my first time I have this DV camera is 2007. So for me, it's very interesting. I want to use this camera to record some class of the dance um, exercise or some dance movement. Um, I, can, I can bring this, I can remember, I can 
record this movement when after my university or my um, college, I can go to teach. I can become a teacher of the dancer, dance teacher. I can remember and repeat this movement. I never think this DV camera can like a pen or like a tour to explore myself and my life. So in when I first time to turn this camera to myself to ask myself what what's what's the story you want to tell what's what's you have the story who who are you so this is how i beginning to making film um i think this is the first uh, time i think these things this camera or this um, cinema has the relationship with me some some people like me um, so this is the first uh, thing I wanted to say. Uh, so for me, I I think I learned how to film. I learned um, almost ten years when I went back to my village to filming. I, I think that my best teacher or my only teacher is this camera, what I bring with me in the village, and I think the camera teach me to looking out, looking somebody's life, and to pay attention and give something to this, uh, the other people's life. But also I can, I can anytime turn to myself to ask me myself, what do you think? What you really see something? Do you really see something uh, in this reality, this different life between you and this village? peoples. So, so I think maybe this is not something very um, professional tools, professional skill. I think this is, uh, I always say it's a, a toy because I, I can not nervous about this. I can relax with this camera with me. I just spend time with them and I spend time with my camera with other people's make me very comfortable. So I think this is how I want to share with the kids in the village. So I just said, we are play together. We use this camera to play together. We are not, I'm not teaching you to make a film. I just want to share what I see and I want to know what you see through your eye, through this mirror or something, machine, something. So this is how I uh, start. I I doing um, with this magical toy. I don't know. I'm talking about. Am I clear? <laughs> yeah, very clear. Very clear. It's very interesting because imagine the the background, the historical background from China to Argentina are absolutely different. And at the same time, uh, when I have thought about this round table, I thought about both of you, because I knew that there was some connection on that as uh, filmmakers who work alone. So let's go for Giovanni, uh, who is a little bit different from all of you, although he also works in, a, in a certain ways uh, with his camera, but his films are more complex in certain ways. Uh, for instance, his last one, uh, From the Planet of the Humans, uh, he works with a lot of footage, he used films from other, um, not only non-fiction film, fiction film, he make a kind of collage, and through that he also, of course, integrated all those ideas in a own uh, register, did by him, and that is the moment that I think, yes, there is a connection with that. But, but I would like to know, Giovanni, because you are uh, a little bit less young than the others. Um, so um, I can imagine that you began working not with the digital, but with, uh, or, or at least your learning must have been with, uh, with the analogical cinema or something like that. But uh, how is nowadays in a film like you, especially the last one, because I think that you wouldn't be able to do the film without uh, this kind of digital cameras that we are talking about. And uh, how is that, the relationship between 
most of production on one hand, the technology and the aesthetic knowledge and position here. I don't know if I, if I made myself clear. Yes, in fact, uh, I started making films in uh, Super 8. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> uh, but I discovered how to make film uh, with the Super 8, which was mute. So at that time, I, I was fond of uh, silent cinema. Of, uh, and for me, the, the, the passion of uh, putting together images, of editing, like in the film of, uh, I don't know, Pelesian, Eisenstein, I love this, no? It started from this, that I was uh, working with the material uh, film and uh, putting it together, no? Uh, but then I do also now I do also things with my smartphone. I like to, in a way, to uh, to experiment all the possibilities that you can uh, work with. And uh, in a way, uh, from the planet of the human, the image that I made on the boundaries of uh, between Italy and France uh, was not meant to be the images of the film. It was a preparation image. Uh, and then uh, when, uh, when the production, because I, I had the production, when the production was ready, uh, it was not possible to go there anymore because there was the pandemic. So I decided to work like this using uh, my images like uh, archive and uh, using uh, archive images also. Uh, and in a way, the fact that the, 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 the impossibility of going there, uh, in fact, has a meaning with the film because uh, the film, the starting point of the film is the the silence and the invisibility of the border, of people across trying to cross the border. Uh, and I decided to, 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 start, to start like this. So, of course, I would not have made the film. I don't know. I can never tell uh, if I would have made the film like this or not. Uh, I remember that, uh, for instance, when I, when I bought the first uh, mini TV camera in the, in the end of the 90s. For me, it was a revolution to be uh, able to film my friends, uh, to film uh, uh, my life, you know? Uh, also this idea that you have no limit in filming, but the limit at a certain moment is the meaning of what you are doing for me. And then uh, I realized that uh, at the end, uh, uh, you always go back to what is the, the meaning of the image. And uh, I'm, I'm not very, uh, how do you say? Uh, I'm not very fond of the idea of, of, the, of the quality of image itself. Because for me, uh, the quality of image is not the definition, is a, what you what, what you can reveal through the image and uh, i still believe that the image is what you see and what you don't see and uh, it's like a a door no to to, to other images it's a support for imagination for the people and i i i, I work a lot with the 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 imaginary, um, the imaginary dimension of the of reality. Uh, I'm not able to describe what, what I see. I think that when I when I want to talk about something, I I never I never think I'm going to do a film on this. Uh, there is something. Uh, there is some intuition that started from a reality that I met. And then I use the cinema, cinema to subvert 
know, also the, 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 the image that we can have on this. Uh, so from the planet of the human was very difficult to define also because it was not a film on, on migrants. But it was a film on migrants. But it was also something else. But for me, it was important to 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 have this uh, this subversion in order to talk about about it. You you, you see, and uh, I in a way it's like if I always have the 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 the, the necessity to invent something to invent the reality that I'm describing because I'm not describing a reality. I'm in a way creating a reality with the people that I film, for instance, when I made the film in, in, in prison, uh, the, the previous film, uh, Non è Sogno, or uh, with the place where there is nothing to see, which is a border. <clears throat> One quick uh, comment, uh, Roger. Yes, yes. Because please. when Giovanni was describing this, that it was not meant to to be the final film, but the preparation, it reminded me one film I made in 2015, Toponymia, the one we were talking. It was also a preparation, and I traveled to the north of the country to visit these cities, and I was shooting with the camera that was not going to be the final film, and it ended being the final film. So what I learned is that never expect yourself I will come back and do it again and when you are doing it it might end up in the film so uh, you you better do it the best way at the beginning for the next film I was shooting uh, private companies that helped the militaries during the dictatorship and I took this lesson I was shooting only five minutes very early in the morning so I wouldn't go another time of the day or because I would only go for the right time that it will finish being in the film and don't 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 fool myself saying i will come back and do it again <laughs> with another camera or with something else yes but then you realize that uh, the 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 reality is what you do with the reality you know and uh, what your presence creates also and is and mm -hmm. uh, and what you discover from it so uh, on the contrary of you i've uh, I have a, um, I need to find money for my films. Um, I don't have other jobs from uh, you know from making films. But the difficulty of uh, of confronting to explain a project uh, and the time that it takes also uh, sometimes is um, uh, I think that my film uh, I, I think I would not have done my films like I did them uh, without production, even if, even if it was always a modest production, I never have a mega product, you know? But uh, in a way, in a way I, I'm alone in making films, but I, but I need to confront. And the, the films for, for me is something that uh, I propose and then takes uh, its own life mm -hmm. and you have to, to, to follow and this for this you need also I like to work I edit myself but I work with editors also on different steps you know that helps me understand what I have done because sometimes I don't understand what I'm doing and um, but there are a lot of my films that I've made completely alone. And then I showed them to someone to say, do you understand something of this? And, and uh, it's different, different uh, uh, strategies in a way. But I, I, fundamentally, I, I, I think that <clears throat> uh, it's a... Um, uh, we always, when you make films, we, when you make cinema and uh, you make, uh, you deal with the shadows, you know, in, in uh, New Caledonia, there is this festival I went some years ago, Anugo Aboro. And uh, Anugo Aboro is the 
term of cinema in uh, Kanak, and it means uh, shadow of man. And I think it's, um, I always think about this, this definition about cinema uh, that comes back, goes back to the, I don't know, to the cavern of Platoon, you know? Of, uh, and, um, and then the means, the technical, uh, the fact that you shoot in uh, 35 millimeters in, in HD or in Super 8 or what, of course you have to deal with it, but you can, now I discovered I made some films with the smartphone and I was, I was very curious also of, the, of this. Uh, I'm, now I'm doing also one of my projects is with, um, with materials that are sent me via WhatsApp that I edit. And, uh, but for me, it's cinema. So, I mean, uh, I think that the, the cinema starts when you, you put images together and then there is a, another image that comes from this. I would like to go back in a couple of minutes to what you have said, Giovanni, because one of the main issues nowadays is like there are plenty, plenty of images. There has not been in the whole history of humankind, and especially, of course, since the 20th century, we have never been living around images as we are right now. So my whole, uh, sometimes my, my doubts are every image which is around us is cinema or when an image become cinema. I don't know if you, if you get the point, but let's go towards that point at the very end. Now I would like to ask you, John, <coughs> um, can you tell us a little bit, because it's interesting for me, uh, Jonathan, for instance, has another background like you. Uh, he, he's, I can tell you, he's not a dancer at all, you know. But uh, you came from dancing, and then you realized that, as you just said, the, and it's connected with what Giovanni said minutes ago, because what is important is what the camera reveals. It's not the, the, the quality of the image, if not what the camera allows to see about something that we don't see without a camera. Mm -hmm. So you said minutes ago in your first moment when you were talking, you said that the camera was a kind of extension of yourself, like, uh, like, uh, like part of your body, so to speak. But when, you, when I saw your film, there are a lot of ideas in your film, like projection in the bodies of the, of the, of the kids, uh, the, the, this is magical, fantastic moment at the very end of the film. Can you tell us, because, okay, you, you are a self-taught filmmaker, but there are traditions. Are, how, how do you relate with the traditions of, for instance, Wang Bing, all those guys in China doing films, or it's something that you have been learning by yourself and because you said the camera touch, taught me how to do it. And this is quite interesting because when I see your films, I don't see what many people do doing things with the cameras, the telephone and so on. There is a filmmaker behind what you do. So I am interested to understand how, do you, how, how was the process of learning? Uh, I, I don't know. I think I, 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 it's, it's enough, my question. Mm. Mm. I I think for for me, um, um, I I there's one very interesting question. Always, um, I I I will always be asked, uh, is what's your uh, what's your character, right? Who you are? You are a dancer, or you are a filmmaker, or you are uh, because we are when I'm 
uh, the first time I went back to my village, I was making the oral history about the big famines. So I doing something history, oral history things. So um, I also um, uh, doing another thing, uh, activity programs. So, so for myself, I, I always can, very difficult to, to answer this question. I am a filmmaker for a long time. I don't know why, because, I, I, because I'm shy to talking about I'm a filmmaker. Or maybe I think I, I couldn't, um, for sure, I really understanding what the film or what the cinema is, because I, I still um, think I don't have this answer. I don't know all the things of the camera. I think this is just beginning. But um, like before I said, I learn from this camera by myself, not talking about I just doing this alone because I have this community. Uh, we have the focal memory project. Uh, we have almost around uh, 19, 19 one night, um, filmmaker together. We are talking a lot. We are exchange a lot about what you're filming in your village because everyone filming one locations. We, we don't find this, that, or different topic issues. We just the the how to say the the way we are doing is just one person find a location and keep continue with time and with patience and build the relationship with this location or of course with people also build the relationship with your camera or your your view um there's one thing i want to share because i i don't know if you remember in my film there's a, a group of chicken the chicken they fly in the tree so every day they fly in the tree in in the sun side sun when the sun, wait, how to say it? <laughs> yeah, the sun, bye bye. <laughs> so they, they, they went home. The home, their home is tree. So for me, this is a very interesting uh, moment because I never saw ch chicken can fly because they are just, um, you eat chicken and you, you can see everywhere in the village, they, they are the number of chicken is more than people who live in the village. So you always see the group of chicken, but no people, a group of people. You always think, uh, see the people are individual in the yard, in the river, in the mountain. So this is very um, interesting for me is when, when, when they fly every day, going to the tree, they, oh, they are <laughs> flying as a mystery, I think, a questions for me one time, because I, when I filmed, I saw them fly almost um, six, six years, they fly, but I never think this is an image or this is a film or this is a part of my film want to present. What can I read about the flying, they are flying? Because in the village, the, their life is always very close with the line. They are always working with the line. They are very low. Uh, the movement always low with the line. But the chicken always, every day they want to fly. <laughs> so for me, this is very amazing. So I think the, what I said, making film through my camera teach me like this, to teach me to read something new or something they they are in the light, but I need to find out, I need to talking with them and think with them, imagine with them. So this is what I said, um, learning in filming, I, yeah. <laughs> there is something that I want to change a little bit the subject. Uh, or, or just to go further for another point of view. Because on one hand, I was interested in explore, and this is what we have been doing, 
the relationship between the evolution of, of technology, the possibilities of, of, of filmmakers through the evolution of technology. Uh, there is always a, a whole history about that kind of bond or a kind, kind of uh, intersection. But now I would like to, uh, me, like someone like me who is a programmer, not only a film, a film critic, I, I see a lot of films during the year from many different uh, origins, not, on, not only in terms of countries, but also in terms of uh, poetics. And also I see what is going on in documentary cinema. Uh, the platforms nowadays, they are becoming quite important in reshaping what is being understood, especially for big audiences, what a documentary is. So I have realized that there are certain kind of rules in the way that those films called documentaries are being shown in those platforms. And then we have, on the other hand, the documentaries which are around the film, the film festivals or art house, if there is lucky enough to have art house for documentaries film. So in the last couple of years, what I see is there's certain tendency in documentary cinema in which the grammar of the documentaries are almost juxtaposed with fiction grammar. It has been a problem from the very beginning because we won't really remember Flaherty, the, 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 the schema is, of course, there is a problem over there from the very, very beginning. But beyond that, there was many years that you have quite clear way of understanding what was a documentary and what was a fiction. But nowadays I see plenty of films who, which are documentaries, they use fiction strategies in order to convey what they are saying. In the case of, of Jonathan on one hand, and also in Giovanni, because Giovanni works with a lot of, I would say that what you do, Giovanni, in the last film is a kind of, uh, a kind of a speculative documentary. You know, like you, you speculate in things, like like if you were a philosopher, like Borges, you know, like, you know, something like that. And then with Jonathan, again, there is a big change. He has been working in a certain ways in the style of a certain kind of structuralism in cinema, in documentary cinema. Uh, you, you could, you know, like uh, working with the framing, uh, just observation, and so on. So. But the last thing you did. There is a kind of a strategy which is it almost look a fiction. Uh, so it is a fiction. Tell, it, yeah, it, it is and it's not. So can you tell tell us a little bit about these uh, uncertainties that are behind it, and then also maybe <coughs> Ben she can tell us a little bit because through uh, in the last thing you did because there was a new building being built, uh, there are a lot of fantasies about the kids and then the fantasies began, begins to be the film. So again, there is, uh, it's not fiction, but it's imagination. So can you go through this uh, for a while? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Uh, what, I, what I think is that going back to the beginning of your question about what these uh, online platforms are doing with cinema. And apparently they, they take some strategies from fiction for the audience, let's say, and they think that they, that they work for the audience. But for me, it's totally the opposite. They don't give a shit about the audience. They don't care about the audience. So that's why they make this. I I, I'm not going to say films because th this audiovisual contents that are formatted for, for these platforms. Um, and Camouflage, my last film, it could be understood as a fiction because it's, a, it's about a writer and he's playing himself in the film, but the character he's playing is totally fictional. 
But at the same time, we are getting, without permission, inside the main military base in Argentina, and, and, and we are doing this for real. We are getting inside without asking permission. This is total documentary. But the importance for me is that there are characters, there's even an actress, but when I shoot this, the, 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 what I do with the camera, the, the decoupage, the mise en scene, it's not a fictional uh, way of working because it's not like I do a shot of one person and then I do the counter shot of the other and I cut to a pickup shot of the hands so I can wrap and, and edit what they are saying and manipulate the script like in a fictional kind of a way of shooting. I do very long shots without cutting and I move a lot with the camera from one to the other. But, but I, I, I don't uh, make this uh, transparent uh, editing montage that you can arrange what they are saying. You, you, you assist to a long conversation of a few minutes that started before the, the camera arrived and it will continue. And the meaning of this conversation is not totally clear because I'm always thinking of creating a space for the audience to get inside the film and to work with me. I'm thinking about the audience because I want them to complete the meaning and, 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 and work with the film and keep working with the film when they leave the cinema also. So the film is not going to do this work for them and, 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 and think about the audience as this privileged point of view that you need to order all the information so it's clear and understandable. So yeah, I'm, we are uh, using fictional characters, uh, but there is something about time that when, when these shots are long and, and you don't cut and you don't edit it and you don't, of course it's a manipulation, but you don't manipulate them as these platforms online do. Um, something like Giovanni said, something happens because you are there with the camera, you're waiting, you're, you feel your presence behind the camera in the image and something will happen in front of the camera and you're waiting for that to happen and you know when it happens. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the way I approach this film that it's based on a, on a writer and a fictional character and a book that it's complete fiction, although based on somehow a biography. Um, and I, I, I don't know what I will do next. It's not that I'm moving into fiction. Um, it's what this uh, film needed. So, so yeah. And Giovanni, in your case, how, how is it? Because the, in, your, in your film, which it could be considered a documentary, as I say, I think it's a speculative it's a documentary, for instance, Frog Speaks, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. that is not possible, but <laughs> that's a little bit. Um, in fact, when I started having the idea of the film, I, I, I immediately thought of, uh, that I was going to make a fantastic film, like a science fiction film. But an old science fiction film because uh, uh, something like uh, the island of uh, the lost souls with the mad doctors and that make. Uh, and then I was also thinking of um, of uh, the invention of Morel, the novel by the by Bioy Casares, uh, because. The, the, because the, the, the film in reality started with the short circuit between two stories on the borders, the stories of the migrants, the invisibility of the migrants, something that you know that is happening and that you make like it is not happening, no? And then a, a story which is real, which is the story of this doctor in the, in the last century, that was um, that had invented a rejuvenation uh, treatment with the with monkey glands, no. And uh, um, all of a sudden, the only way to talk about the present for me was to use the past 
to use this fa this fantastic vision as if what we were living today was uh, was in this film and this uh, and this is the way I, I i use the fiction in order to tell something about the real but i never pretend to 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 make a real fiction. I like to show that, this, I, in fact, I, I always like to show the mechanism of the films. Because when you show the mechanism, the dispositive, then something happened that is really like this, like in Pasolini, you know, in, uh, um, La Ricotta, or things like this. And uh, 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 the frogs really talk. In fact, in fact, I started recording the, the songs of the frogs in the water tanks that are there. Just like an um, atmosphere, you know? And then at, at a certain moment, I realized that, uh, uh, that they were talking, telling the story. They were telling the present. So it becomes real, but it becomes real because it gives a sense it has a meaning for the film that this extra human uh, 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 animals uh, talk about what's happening to the humans simply like that. because they are there and they are always, they, you don't see them they're invisible but you but you can hear them and um, but this is this is for me part of the mechanism uh, to to create to 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 interrogate the real that you're living here. I'm not making you know uh, I'm not making mockumentary. I'm not making uh, uh, I'm making I'm sim for me. I'm simply making cinema. Uh, and uh, to make cinema, especially. Okay, you 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 have to you have a, especially now you have a kind of responsibility on what you are doing because you are free of doing it. No, you can do what you like, but this has something to do with uh, with what ha is happening in the world you are living in. Uh, so I think that it is uh, very important to to break the common representation of reality. And uh, there is a lot of common uh, logo comune, as you say, common representation, uh, 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 the stereotypes of reality. And for me, uh, I can only break them, uh, the stereotypes, or subvert the representation by using, by inventing something, which can be a dispositive of filming, or which can be a dispositive of of uh, putting together uh, different levels of, uh, of uh, reality. Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if it's clear, but... Uh, <laughs> um, she, how, how is the, the process when the... I, I was amazed in the film in your last film, how you work with the imagination and you, the, the imagination becomes the film in a way, in the last 25, 30 minutes. Um, I, um, what, what you said before, um, let me, let me think of something because I, let me, some, let me think something when I um, when I when I'm in dancer in the time I'm dance I will, I choreographer by myself to myself because I think as a dancer we always fantasy or, or we we always want to become someone or something there's full of imagination we don't dance about real things. We always want our body not be not like a person, not like a human, normal human. We want to fly higher. We want um, our body flexible and not like 
you can you can look like everything, but you you cannot look like a person when when I'm dance. I don't know if it's, if it's right or not, but it's very interesting because when you are you want to become something, but but you have to use this real body to do it. So I, for me, I always think about this, what is the real material, um, no matter about your body, your, what you, you can film, the, the village or people or your imaginations, they are all mixed together. I don't think my film is the traditional documentary film uh, only about re reality, but imagination is in the reality, in the persons, especially the kids. So for, for me, I think I always think when you are in the childhood, you are more interesting in one person. I, I always very uh, like the kids because they are full of imagination. They are very funny. You don't know what they are thinking in their mind. But you, when you talk with the the the, the others, the peoples who already grew up, you know what they are thinking. You know what they are. They want their life to become something. They lose their imagination. So. Uh, when I make fairy tale, this film, fairy tale in 47 km, um, before I think maybe this is about the house, how I build a house, I build a space in my village. But then the kids come, the kids join me. They want to join and thinking, imagination, what's the building become? So this is about uh, something change, change me to um, film it. So, so the story become uh, imagination, the the progress of the imagination. So the, the blue house, of course, I'm in blue house right now, <laughs> but not they are not only a building. They are also mix some kids fantasy or my fantasy. Um, yeah, because my name is Meng Qi. Meng Qi is uh, Meng is dream, Qi is miracle fantasy. So <laughs> my mother wants me. I'm a person. This is documentary, but my name is fantasy. So I always think this uh, in my in my film. This is uh, how I think and how I think. Of, how to film and how to think my film. But in, other, in the end hand, documentary, this word is very new for us in China because when I translate this word, documentary, called Ji Lu Pian, it's not the, the, the original meaning. The original meaning links with some archive, you document something, important things. But in China, we trans translated it, Ji Lu Pian is like uh, about something very uh, tele television way. It must be very new. You must be tell the truth, something like this, the, the, the meaning. So why I named my film Self Portrait? I keep this title uh, for for all of my film, yeah, now it's the 11th film, because I want to document myself, my, my step of the filmmaking. So this is another way I limit to, when I first time know in English, or I don't know in Spanish or the other language, what's the, um, the word. But when the first time I know documentary's meaning, with different and with full of the other meanings, it make me awake and to think what to rethink what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I just want to share this. It was extremely interesting for at least for me to listen to you. But this last part it makes me a lot of idea. I was wondering how is. How do you see or how do you perceive yourself? Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Chinese cinema has always been 
the historian way to to analyze it and uh, to understand it, the, the it changes and movements and and schools has always been uh, divided in 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 generations the the, the main six generation there are two figures Shan, Shan, uh, Shia Shanke and uh, Wang Bing so uh, and Wang Bing is particularly one of the most important filmmakers in documentary cinema uh, and uh, but also this generation which I consider connected with you even that I think for your age and some people that I know from China filmmakers of your age you you should be the seventh generation already but anyway it was fully connected with the digital cameras because it was a new way to work in cinema without the the whole state procedures and and uh, you know permissions um, and interdictions and so on. So, uh, uh, I don't know. How, do you are you in touch with those filmmakers? Do you know that there is a kind of sense of community as filmmakers in, in that particular sense, or you are you are absolutely alone working except with those people that you were with? Uh, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Uh, I I heard about the generations, the five, six, something like that. But I I don't really know how to who 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 made this and uh, why why is this because some some director of uh, fiction and some director of documentary film. But because I'm I'm living in uh, China. I know a lot of filmmakers. They are not in the list, but they are very important for the, the, the movement of the independent filmmaking. So uh, I don't know if this list is from the foreigner or because I, I, I'm not a study about this, but um, there's one person very important for me, uh, is Wu Wenguang. Uh, he is the founder of the Focal Memory Project, he found the Cao Chang Di Wu Station, uh, where I start to make in my film, the, the studio of the, uh, in Be based in Beijing uh, in 2005. So he, he launched the uh, villager documentary uh, project. Um, it's a kind of a documentary movement who giving the camera to the village people, they, they film their life. And I'm joined the Focal Memory Project. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are the new generation of the filmmaker who want to make a film. So we went back to our village to, to start this. Um, but um, for me, I, I don't know how to say, for me, the the relationship between the other filmmaker in China um, is not like um, I don't know because I, I I never talk with Jia Zhang Ke and and I know Wang Bin I meet her, him before in Yamagata Film Festival but we never have chance to to talk and actually I didn't have have chance to watch his film. Old film, I only can see his film in in outside of China, but I can see um, the other filmmaker in in China in independent some like bookstore very s small um, event because we cannot go to the cinema. Uh, so so like I said in Cao Chang Di Wu Station we want to do something linked to different generations uh, filmmaker we have our own workshop we we invite some new filmmaker to join us we're also doing a film festival very very small one called film for mother this is kind of a an, an new things for me also because uh, in this in this time 
after 2020, this lot of problem come out. There before, of course, we have always have problem in China, but now it's more and more problem between the very close relationship in the family, in the two generation, the grandparents and the grand, um, the parents and the grandparents and the kids. So we, this is very big um, problem in each family. So when you think each family have the same problem, very, um, so this is become a very big issue right now. So we want to link to the new filmmaker, maybe someone we don't, we don't know him or her before, but we, we, um, uh, we are together to share the film, we discuss the film, also discuss what's the background in the family and what's background in the, um, what's happening right now. So this is what we do. We will not only uh, recognize or link to each other between the list. I don't know how to say, say it, but yeah, this is what I can share. <laughs> and Giovanni, uh, how do you perceive um, yourself, your work in the Italian Italian no fiction community. There are big names nowadays who won a lot of prizes with their films sometimes as a documentary in Venice, for instance. But uh, how, how do you see? Because the, for people from abroad, if you are not following what is going on in Italy, they are not, it's not clear what is the map. If, if I, you know, I know you, I know, I know some, a lot of filmmakers, of course, but uh, usually for audiences, even people who go to film festivals, they, you know, you have Pietro Marcello, you know, Bellocchius is still doing things. And uh, how is, how, how do you, how, how do you see that? Uh, no, it's not very clear. I know Pietro is, um, He's a friend uh, uh, from the period I was making in Purgatorio in Napoli. Um, but I don't, um, I don't recognize myself in the Italian cinema. And I'm not, uh, yes, I'm considered, uh, I'm con yes, I have some consideration, but I'm considered as a kind of outsider because they don't know very well from where I come from because of the fact that I was uh, grown in, in outside of Italy, in Brussels. So some people think that I'm still living in Belgium, no? And uh, I don't live in a city. Uh, I live in the mountains, uh, so I'm not in the Roman or Milanese or, 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 or Torinese. Um, even though I know a lot of people there, in fact, I have uh, no. I know I know a lot of people. I, I cannot say. I cannot uh, give a definition. You know, uh, I think that uh, uh, there are some very young, very young, uh, thirty years old, thirty-five years old. Uh, a filmmaker that I know that uh, I'm very fond of what uh, they are doing. Uh, I'm not very fond uh, generally of what is considered the good things in Italian cinema, especially in the especially in the so-called independent. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> and you, my friend, just to. Uh, Jonathan, just how how do you perceive yourself? Because in Argentinian cinema, it's such a there are plenty of it's quite different from other film uh, national cinemas, and uh, in the realm of documentaries, there are plenty of people working. So there is nothing maybe so hidden. But 
but you were just a, um, a rare bird working alone. So how do you perceive yourself in, in this community of filmmakers? Oh, very hard question. <laughs> um, I don't know, because uh, somehow I, I don't uh, feel I belong. Um, I see that there are groups that I don't belong to these groups. So you have a group that they studied in a certain university and this uh, there is a whole group of people studying in this university. I don't belong to this group. Then you have a group of uh, filmmakers dealing with dictatorship that they have their parents disappear or their survivors or somehow they have a, 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 a blood connection with the history and I don't belong to this group either. Uh, and then the, the films about dictatorship are a group by themselves because there are so many and they are always asking me, are you making a film again about dictatorship? And yes, I think we still need to make films about dictatorship because what we have uh, achieved in terms of construction of memory, in terms of, I mean, justice, but also, you know, in the sites and museums and so on, it's very fragile. Everything what, that we achieved in the last uh, years, uh, we have to defend it all the time because the government changes and they want to get rid of everything and start over again. So, so we have to keep making films about the dictatorship because it's not that we are stuck in the past. We look into the past, but because we are discussing the present and the future of, of the country, of the democracy, of, of everything, of, of, of what we want to do with the economy and the social relationships. So we still need to look to the, to the past to discuss the future, the present and the future. Uh, I think the, the important thing is that I, I feel comfortable with, with the way that I work. And I, I'm not saying you, you have to do it the way I do it. It's not the right, it just works for myself. And I don't, uh, I don't have the, the need to belong or, but of course my films will, will dialogue and, and interact with, with other films that are alike. And what I find interesting about this is that there's no reality. Reality is what we build and we construct with the films. And my films are in dialogue and in fight with other films. So reality is being built out of this a fight of, of films and speeches and texts and books and all kinds of uh, narrations about the world, no? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's about to be the end because uh, I, I, I promised by email that it won't be more than um, 70 minutes, we are 83. Uh, I'm tempted to do a last question. Uh, I'm tempted, but maybe I shouldn't. What should I do? No, I was wondering if you have to just in a, in a small sentence or something, not to make a theory, but what do you see nowadays the most dangerous thing in order that cinema uh, cannot be what it could be. Uh, it's a little bit abstract, but it's not. You know, if you have to find what is the dangerous, where is the danger? Uh, because I can tell some hypothesis that I have in mind, but I don't want to talk about it. But you, as people who are working in the way that you work, that you have been striving for freedom, for instance, in the three cases of you as a filmmaker. But beyond that, if you have to find what is the danger, where is where do you think cinema cannot be what it could be? I have one uh, quick. Uh, I think festivals quick, are very better, festivals better. are very dangerous. Festivals okay. <laughs> are very dangerous. If you think about the festivals, this is very risky. You have to forget everything about them. <laughs> okay, this is one. Giovanni?
um, the rhetoric. I think that the most dangerous thing is the the not the not the festivals, but the all the people that tell you how to make films. And uh, that make it, that, that create a, 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 a kind of a conformization of imaginary. And this you see it in uh, not only on the platforms, but you see it in, also in a, a lot of uh, so called independent films. And I think this is the, the biggest danger. But it has always been. Um, Benji? I think this is very, <laughs> very difficult for me because I think I never um, asked myself this question before because I, I always thinking about what the filming can be just different themes but but for me i think the right now just come out right my 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 mind is the the short video is really um, i think this is very terrible <laughs> because <laughs> the, you cannot escape it and the kids especially in my village, the kids just quizze about it. And the, 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 the villagers, they are also, right now, they have a phone, they always, this is really, really new things in my village. When I uh, check my film in the last four years, and it, no, nobody have this phone to <laughs> look in the, the short film, a uh, short video, but right now everyone has one. I don't know what's because yes, they um, they have this phone and they link to the outside of their life, but the, the very fast things, speed, and you can cho -cho 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 -cho. Yeah. you cannot think about you can you lose your patience and you you cannot. Um, feeling the time. This is the um, yeah for me. It's really terrible. Yes, I I I, I like the the all what you have been saying now because I think if you put it together, there's something to be thought, and these panels are about to be thought, not to to play the security labels, cards, and so on, if not to open up always a hole in the middle of the certainty, which most of the film festival has, have, and, uh, and I hope that we could have helped a little bit just to, to keep going on thinking about what is going on with this invention that has begun at the very late 19th century, and uh, they are still around us. We call it cinema, and it's one of the most beautiful way to explore the world around, and to sometimes to find what is not right, and at the same time to uh, convey pleasure and uh, and the pleasure of knowledge also. So thank you so much for all of you, Giovanni, Jonathan, and Charles Manchi. <laughs> And, uh, and also to Carlos, who is behind it, and uh, we have been supporting us with the whole technological device. And uh, for the audiences, there are other two panels coming back, coming next. So be tuned, as nowadays people say. Uh, it has been a privilege to be with all of you. And uh, please watch those films by Jonathan, by Giovanni, and by Benji. Eh, muchas gracias y nos encontramos próximamente aquí en, estas, eh, en estos plus que tiene el Play Doc. Hasta la próxima y muy amables por estar con nosotros. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. bye, bye. bye, bye.